myself karna majit narayan rao assistant professor vijayanagar college hospital now we shall discuss with sabain formula for standard reverberation time we as we all know that the standard reverberation can be defined as the time required for the intensity of sound to fall to 1 millionth of its original sound after the original sound is cut off is called as standard reverberation time in order to derive this particular expression we shall make the following assumptions the assumptions are the sound energy is uniformly distributed throughout the hall and the absorption of sound by the ear is neglected and the source emits the sound energy constantly throughout the complete hall for this particular we shall divide this into three different steps that is we shall find out what is the rate of incident energy on the walls and the rate of absorption by the walls and we shall find out the final steady value of e in terms of the rate of emission of power of the source finally we shall find out what is the rate of growth and decay of sound energy in a complete hall now let us consider the amount of sound energy that is produced in the complete hall between the points a and b which forms the arc of a circle with o as center and r as the radius if i draw the normal to this point o that is drawn exactly at right angles at the point o this is said to be the normal when this radius which moon moves by an angle theta and further which when moves by one more angle d theta then this particular if i consider to find this particular area of this shaded portion which lies between theta and d theta then this radial length is given by dr and the arc length is given by r d theta with which we can find out what is the area of this shaded portion the area of the shaded portion is nothing but r d theta into dr which is nothing but the area of this shaded portion now we shall find out if the whole figure which when rotated about the normal through an angle d phi that means so whenever this particular which when moves through this particular about this normal through this particular angle d phi then the area of the shaded portion to travel through a distance dx is given by r sin theta into d phi which is nothing but the area of the shaded portion to travel through a distance dx and is given by r sin theta into d phi now if i consider this to be a cuboid if i consider this to be the cuboid what is the volume of this cuboid which is being measured through this particular volume so the volume traced by this shaded portion dv which is nothing but area into distance the area is given by r d theta into dr into the distance is given by r sin theta into d phi which is equal to r square sin theta d theta dr into d phi let us call this to be the most significant equation now let us represent this to be the equation 3 then we shall find out what is the amount of sound energy present in this volume so the amount of sound energy that is being produced or present in the volume is given by e into dv where e is the energy density and dv is the volume and that is given by e into dv is given by r square sin theta d theta dr into d phi then this amount of sound energy travels in all the direction through this particular element then the amount of sound energy present in this volume per unit solid angle now let us understand what is this solid angle now if i consider a plane angle that means the plane angle means the angle described by a circle now suppose if theta is the angle which when moves the radius which when moves by distance equal to l then theta is given by l by r where l is nothing but the circumference the circumference of the circle is given by 2 pi r and the radius is r as r cancels we get this as 2 pi therefore the plane angle is theta that is equal to 2 pi and the plane angle is expressed in terms of radian now for a solid angle if i consider this to be a cone then the angle measured in the cone is considered to be a solid angle now let us represent the solid angle as omega this solid angle omega is nothing but the surface area divided by r square 
where r is the radius of the sphere then at this point the surface area of the sphere is given by 4 pi r square pi r square that is equal to 4 pi therefore the solid angle is given by omega that is equal to 4 pi the solid angle is expressed in terms of steradian in other words the plane angle is theta that is equal to 2 pi radians whereas for a solid angle the solid angle is given by omega that is equal to 4 pi steradian that means the angles and the solid angle we can observe the amount of sound energy present in this volume per unit solid angle is given by e r square sin theta d theta dr d phi by 4 pi this is for a solid angle that is given by 4 pi whereas the solid angle subtended by the area ds at this element of volume is given by ds cos theta by r square which is the solid angle now the amount of sound energy traveling towards ds from dv which consisting of two components that is the amount of sound energy present in dv and is given by e r square sin theta d theta dr d phi by 4 pi and the solid angle subtended that is given by ds cos theta by r square when we take this product of these two term we get this as e sin theta cos theta d theta dr ds by d phi divided by 4 pi and to find the total sound energy by ds in one complete second we have to integrate this complete expression for the complete volume lying within a distance c of ds where c means the velocity of light now to integrate this now we shall integrate this equation that is such that the phi varies from 0 to 2 pi and theta changes from 0 to pi by 2 and r varies from 0 to c now if you integrate the above expression with respect to phi that is integration of 0 to 2 pi d phi that means we consider this value of integration of d phi integration of d phi is phi and the limits are 0 to 2 pi on substitution of the limits we get this as 2 pi minus 0 that is equal to 2 pi in other words integration of 0 to 2 pi d phi is nothing but 2 pi on substitution of this value here we get this as e sin theta cos theta d theta dr ds divided by 2 where 2 pi cancels with 4 pi remaining 2 and therefore we get this divided by 2 as this particular factor in this particular expression let us consider this to be the most significant equation considered to be phi now if you integrate this equation again with respect to theta that is e dr ds by 2 and integration of 0 to pi by 2 sin theta cos theta into d theta if you consider this component separately that integration of 0 to pi by 2 sin theta cos theta into d theta if you divide and multiply by 2 for this particular component you get this as 2 sin theta cos theta by 2 that is equal to sin 2 theta by 2 so in other words if you integrate 0 to pi by 2 sin theta cos theta into d theta this component of sin theta cos theta is nothing but sin 2 theta divided by 2 into d theta here if I take 1 by 2 common integration of sin is minus cos 2 theta and the coefficient of theta is 2 that is to be taken in the denominator and the limits are 0 to pi by 2 on substitution of this limits in 0 to and 0 and pi by 2 we get this value to be 2 by 4 that is equal to 1 by 2 now when I substitute this particular value of 0 to pi by 2 sin theta cos theta d theta as 1 by 2 then this total component is given by e dr ds divided by 4 and let us consider this to be the sixth equation now we shall integrate this particular equation with respect to r that is on integrating this particular component with respect to r that is e ds by 4 integration of 0 to c into dr that is equal to e ds by 4 and r integration of dr is r limits are 0 to c on substitution you get this as c that is equal to e c divided by 4 into ds let us consider this to be the seventh x suppose if a is the absorption coefficient of the wall the amount of sound energy absorbed by ds in one second is given by e c a divided by 4 into ds for the total sound energy absorbed at any time 
is given by 1 by 4 times EC and for the complete area of the hall we have to take the summation of all such particular area in the complete hall which is nothing but the summation and is given by summation A into DS that is equal to 1 by 4 EC and summation A DS is nothing but A that it can be replaced here by A that is in other words is equal to 1 by 4 EC into A. If P is the rate of emission of sound energy then P is equal to 1 by 4 E maxima into CA or E maxima is equal to 4 P divided by CA. Now at this point we shall find out what is the rate and growth of rate of growth and rate of decay of sound energy. To find the rate of growth if E is the energy density and V is the volume of the hall, the total sound energy is given by E into V. The rate of growth of sound energy, to find this value, we have to differentiate EV with respect to T, that is T by dt of EV. Now if we differentiate this by UV method, we get this as V dE by dt plus E dV by dt. Since volume of the hall is a constant, therefore derivative of constant is 0, therefore this term is 0 which is equal to V dE by dt. That means the derivative of E by dt, d by dt of EV is given by V dE by dt. Now we know that the rate of emission of sound energy which consisting of two components. One is the rate of growth of sound energy and the other is the rate of absorption of sound energy. The rate of growth of sound energy is given by V dE by dt and the rate of absorption of sound energy is given by 1 by 4 ECA. Now if I divide by V on both sides, we get P by V is equal to dE by dt plus 1 by 4 times ECA by V or it can also be written as P by V is equal to dE by dt plus CA by 4V times E. Let us call this to be equation. Now in this equation 8, now if I consider this value of CA by 4V is equal to alpha, then CA by 4 alpha is equal to V. Then equation 8, that means this equation becomes DE by DT plus CA by 4V is nothing but alpha into E that is equal to P by V. P by V is equal to P by V is nothing but CA by 4 alpha that is equal to P into the denominator of denominator becomes numerator that is given by 4 alpha by CA or that is equal to 4 P by CA into alpha. On substitution we get this as D by DT plus alpha e is equal to 4 P by CA times alpha. Now if I multiply by e to the power of alpha t on both sides we get this value to be dE by dt into e to the power of alpha t plus alpha e into e to the power of alpha t is equal to 4p by ca into alpha into e to the power of alpha t. This component of left hand side which is that can be written as d by dt of e into e to the power of alpha t which can be presented in the form of uv method where u is considered to be e and v is considered to be e to the power of alpha t. Then it can be written as this is d by dt of e to e to the power of alpha t is equal to 4p by c a into alpha e to the power of alpha t. Now when we integrate this above equation we get integration of t by dt of e into e to the power of alpha t is equal to integration of 4p by c a into alpha e to the power of alpha t. Now here integral cancels with d by dt we get this as e into e to the power of alpha t is equal to 4p by c a into alpha which is a constant and integration of e to the power of alpha t is e to the power of alpha t and the coefficient of t is to be taken in the denominator that is alpha plus k that is nothing but constant of integration and let us call this to be the equation 9. Now in this expression of equation 9 we shall find out what is the rate of growth of sound energy. And for the growth of sound energy t when t is equal to 0 e is equal to 0. When we put e is equal to 0 and t is equal to 0 in the equation 9 we get this value of k. 
the value of k is given by minus 4p by ca now when we substitute k is equal to minus 4p by ca in back into this expression 9 then this expression becomes e into e to the power of alpha t is equal to 4p by ca into e to the power of alpha t plus minus 4p by ca that is equal to 4p by ca into e to the power of alpha t minus 1. Now if I divide by e to the power of alpha t on both sides that is when we divide by e to the power of alpha t on both sides we get e into e to the power of alpha t by e to the power of alpha t is equal to we consider this complete term to be e maximum and e to the power of alpha t cancels with e to the power of alpha t minus 1 by e to the power of alpha t and this value which when transferred to the numerator it becomes e to the power of minus alpha t therefore e is equal to e maximum into 1 minus e to the power of minus alpha t where e maximum is given by 4p by ca which shows that the energy increases exponentially until e is e maximum when the time t is infinity for the decay of sound energy if the sound energy is cut off the rate of emission is given by that is when p is equal to 0 t is equal to 0 when p is equal to 0 t is equal to 0 e is e maximum that means now this equation becomes e into e to the power of alpha t is equal to 4p by c a into e to the power of alpha t plus k now if i substitute t is equal to 0 then we get this value e is equal to k or k is equal to e into e maximum so when we substitute this value then we get this particular equation to be e into e to the power of alpha t is equal to e maximum when i transfer e to the power of alpha t to the right hand side we get e is equal to e maximum into e to the power of minus alpha t which shows that the energy decreases exponentially as you can see here the value of energy decreases exponentially now to derive the expression for standard reverberation time we know that the standard reverberation time means the time required for the intensity of sound to fall to one millionth of its original sound after the original sound is cut off and it is given by e is equal to e maximum by 10 to the power of 6 and from the decay of sound energy e is equal to e maximum into e to the power of minus alpha t when we replace this value of e that is e maximum into e to the power of minus alpha t in this expression we get this as e maximum into e to the power of minus alpha t is equal to e maximum by 10 to the power of 6 as we are observing that e to the power of maximum e maximum cancels on e to the power of minus alpha t is equal to 1 by 10 to the power of 6 or e to the power of minus alpha t is equal to 10 to the power of minus 6 when we take log on both sides we get this value to be that is log e to the power of minus alpha t is equal to log 10 to the power of minus 6 that is equal to minus alpha t into log e to the base e that means in other words if we expand by log e to the m power n it can be written as n log m that is nothing but minus alpha t into log e to the base e is equal to this can be written as minus 6 into log 10 to the base e that means here we know that log of any value with respect to same base is 1 therefore log e to the base e is 1 that is equal to minus alpha t is equal to minus 6 into if you change base e to base 10 it should be multiplied by 2.303 and that can be written as log 10 to the base 10 again this value is equal to 1 and again if you replace back this value of alpha is equal to ca by 4v and t is equal to capital t in this expression back that means if you replace alpha by ca by 4v and the value of t by capital t we get this as ca by 4v into t is equal to 6 into 2.303 then t is equal to 4v by ca into 6 into 2.303 that is equal to 6 into 2.303 into 4v by this value of c c is nothing but the velocity of sound this velocity of sound in air is given by 330 at the 0 degree celsius and it is 340 at room temperature that means if you consider any of this particular value we get this value to be 0 0.167 v divided by a that means this value of a is nothing but sigma as 
or t is equal to 0.167 v by sigma as which is an expression for Sabine's formula for standard reverberation time. Therefore, the expression for standard reverberation time is given by t that is equal to 0.167 v divided by sigma as. This happens to be the Sabine's formula for standard reverberation time.